So Armin, welcome back to our series of webinars and interviews. Uh, good to have you. And today's topic is something I think that's, it's been on people's minds in the area of development forever with open source and how to get it right. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit about build instructions, if I recall correctly. That's correct. So just to set the context for this, uh, when it comes to building the software, uh, that's important just for the fact of technical reputability, but also important under some licenses uh, like the GPL. And it's also quite an issue uh, on getting builds done correctly. Would that be a fair summary? Yeah, that would be. So for example, if you're looking at the GPL version 2 license, there is the requirement that you have the scripts to control compilation and installation. The, the, the license actually says that that is part of the license. And there's a good reason for that because building software is not always trivial. So uh, for example, you have to build software inside a certain environment. And depending on the, how the environment is configured, your build might either succeed or not succeed. So for mo most people never, uh, notice this, but once you start going uh, to do things in embedded Linux development, then there are all these little things just pop up and then it becomes quite important to set the right uh, environment. And when I'm talking with my clients in enforcement cases, so I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm uh, quite happily troll fighting. And one of the uh, demands from the troll is always you have to have completely corresponding source code. And then we are trying to do a rebuild and then just setting the environment correctly, that always turns out to be a challenge. So what do I have to do? And what I often see is that there are lots of implicit things. So a lot of implicit knowledge that is somewhere in an engineer's mind but that which is not which should be made explicit. So, for example, one one example uh, on older Debian versions. Uh, no, I'm sorry, on older Ubuntu versions, uh, Canonical actually had their own shell. So instead of bash, they would have dash, and a lot of scripts, as a lot of build scripts, are actually um, expecting bash, and if you would run them through dash, then the build would fail. So a lot of people, what they would do automatically is just, you know, reconfigure their Ubuntu system to use bash as the default system shell instead of dash. But you have to document that. So that and if you don't document it, the build fails. So that's where uh, build instructions actually come in. So what I've, uh, what I've done is I'm giving my clients a very simple text, like a, like a template and I say, you know, follow these steps. And we're going to specify everything. And then I'm going to repeat those instructions line by line. I go into complete dummy mode and I, I see if I can basically rebuild the software correctly. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, is there a ballpark for how many times the build instructions are missing or incorrect? Is it, is it common? In my experience, that happens in almost all of the cases that I'm doing. Wow. And you touched on uh, copyright enforcement, or more specifically, there's a, a very small subset of that with uh, copyright trolling. Um, That's correct. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm guessing that if a lot of cases are lacking build instructions, that's a very easy vector for a copyright troll to try to zoom in on. Yeah. So uh, some people are, are saying like you should install a certain distribution. They don't specify if it's 32-bit or 64-bit. So if you then just download something, then you can say, well, your software doesn't work. So now you're in, uh, so now you're not in compliance. I mean, that's, that, that's something that could happen. And that's something that I'm trying to avoid with these build instruction templates. And it strikes me that, you know, if, if it's a, a normal compliance action and people just want to ensure that the stuff comes into compliance, if there's a, an issue with the build instruction, someone who notices it would contact the company and it gets resolved. Um, though the, the issue with something like a trawl is their goal isn't to uh, get compliance per se, it's to leverage the CCD sys and whatnot. So 
it's a it's a pretty big vector to leave open. Yeah. And of course, for when of course I'm I'm looking I'm doing troll cases, so I'm looking at the worst possible scenario always. Yeah, and I mean, as you said, for instance, if someone doesn't differentiate between thirty-two and sixty-four bit, which is a, a trivial mistake, um, they have an issue, which I guess leads to the fact that um, there aren't so many common approaches to build, and I believe you've built, <laughs> built some reference documentation on how people can approach uh, these type of instructions, which might lead to a, you know, a ballpark common approach. Yeah, so one of the things that I noticed is that uh, when I'm asking about build instructions, that people were just uh, confused about what should go in there, and they would just give me something, and it's like, this is not detailed enough, or they would give me a whole handbook and would say, well, this is probably too much information. And this is mostly to help them guide, uh, to write some build instructions, which are detailed enough, but which are not, uh, how would you say that, excessive. So give me a little insight on kind of the excessive build instructions. Would that be more of just detail beyond what's strictly necessary that could slow yeah. down you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and that, I must say that has only happened once <laughs> so far, but uh, yeah, that's just like, okay, well, this is the fun a description of what the software was used for inside the system. And I don't know what, so I think that, that that's too much. I don't care. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> just a little bit too much, but on the other, on the other hand, there's also uh, the build instructions that I got from other clients was type make without any other specification. It's like, oh, that's probably not going to work. <laughs> I, I just I thought it was quite amusing that you have a situation where there's too much instruction. Um, well, that, that, that has only happened once. <laughs> I suppose it's proof, proof that it can happen. <laughs> um, okay, so going into the thing that people often have far too little, um, how, how much documentation have you created to I'll cover this. Well, it's actually the, the, the templates that I've made are relatively little. Let me see. So, so that we're talking about the template that you have to fill in is about 40 lines of text. So basically just oh. a few chaps, chapters. It's very, very little. It's, it's usually I just need something like four or five pa paragraphs. Like uh, you need to specify which distribution I have to install, how much disk space is needed, which packages need to be installed, what uh, changes to the environment need to be made, so like environment variables, symbolic links that need to be created, how to start the build, how to solve any known errors that might pop up, and where I can find the final uh, build artifact. And basically that's all I need. And it, I mean, in practice, if it's, if it's only that, then it's unlikely to be one of those items which you put under, this is a heavy burden. Well, so, so what, what I found is that this, this, is, this is in practice should be enough. So these items. More or less, they're what you need. Yep. And if, if those are specified, then what I just do is I open a virtual machine, install the distribution, do every, install everything uh, that is uh, specified. I follow all those steps and then I check the, the end result, the build artifact. And if everything matches, then I'm completely happy. And, uh, you know, marginally related to this, is it common that you find a situation where you're definitely not happy? Uh, you know, that things are such a mess that you, you can't possibly fix this. It happens quite often. So uh, luckily this situation is improving because I'm, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing that uh, now that people are moving towards newer uh, SDKs and standard solutions, it becomes a lot easier. But especially the older devices, it's, uh, it's rough. An interesting point there that things are getting better. Um, I guess that leads to a kind of a side question here. Why do you think people are getting build instructions so wrong so often? 
it, it, you know, it's, it's not like malicious intent, but it's obviously a continued, repeated um, hold in compliance. Well, I think that one of the uh, one of the issues is that they get they get their devices from an ODM, and which builds on an SDK from a chipset manufacturer, and something goes wrong there along the lines. So, so either the SDK is a very old homebrew thing from a chipset manufacturer, mm -hmm. or uh, or some homebrew thing from the ODM. Or something else and I think that there's also a, a, a few years of delay in the supply chain I mean just just the other day I saw something which has suffered from uh, 2002 18 yeah, years ago 18 years and that's that's uh, a recent product to market well it's not a recent product to market but it's still being sold and actively developed it's, it's, it's clearly a, <laughs> an area where the, it, it's ripe for error. Now, it does seem surprising that um, really old code would be still in market. And I'm guessing that one of the issues with builds here is if you don't document it properly, and you, know, you have code that was kind of put together many years ago, uh, you could end up in a situation where you can't rebuild your own thing. Yeah, and then the original uh, developer leaves and 10 years later, you get hit by a troll. And then you have to contact the old developer to see the other side of the How did you actually build this? That's a, yeah. an uncomfortable situation to be in. Uh, does, does that happen a lot in practice? I mean, just on the, let's take the trolling. Uh, is the trolling situation still pretty active? It is, and not as, not as uh, active as before, but there still is quite a bit of enforcement action. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge because of course, um, when, I mean, regardless of people's best wishes, it's quite easy to have errors enter into products. And one of the things we sort of rely on, uh, not just in open source, but in all software transactions is kind of the idea of good faith and you know, if things go a little sideways, people are looking to fix an issue rather than simply um, do something like trolling. But uh, yeah. Okay, so these build instructions, these examples are clearly going to be useful. And um, you're gonna be placing these as part of the community documentation in the Open Chain project, uh, which is really great of you. Um, do you have a suggestion for how we should communicate this to our to our general community? How we should try to make sure it goes as far as possible? You know, which departments and companies should we talk with? What type of resistance, in your experience, are we likely to meet? Also, when when it comes to resistance, as soon as I give the templates, uh, most of my clients are super happy to receive them because they just they just use them, they follow them, and they say they are very very helpful. The lawyers that I pointed to, to these instructions, they said, great, I'm going to send this to all my clients. Uh, so I'm not seeing a lot of uh, resistance towards uh, you, the templates themselves. So that should not be an issue. Uh, whom you should target? Probably the development. So uh, the development uh, units, just set up departments. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, a lot of the time we're talking about OSPOs and legal, uh, but certainly we have gateways into development departments and um, perhaps we should also package this up with things like our uh, developer education, you know, developer guidelines for contribution and so on. Yeah, and so what I would suggest is that when a company is doing a source code release and they actually have build instructions that they just assign someone, who just uh, basically blanks his or her mind and then say, well, you know, here's the source code, here are the build instructions, try to build it. Right. All right. Simple build uh, hygiene. That's a good way to put it. Build hygiene is a nice, neat way to put it. All right, we're gonna package that up and we're gonna try and do that. Armin, thank you so much for making time today and thank you especially for this contribution. It's gonna make a real difference. Uh, my pleasure.